Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. Today is part two of my pants fitting series that I started with never scoop the crotch, question mark, question mark, question mark. Today what I'm going to do is give you my definition of what I think scooping the crotch means. Then I wanna talk a little bit about the top down center out method by Ruth Collins. And I'm gonna give you some tips for preparing for next week when I give you a review of this method. I'm actually super excited about it. But before I get to that, let's look at a crotch curve. Okay, so you can see here I've, I have a front and back leg and I dashed in the crotch shape. Okay, so that is the original crotch shape of these two pattern pieces, and I put it together on the inseam so you could see the whole U-shaped crotch. So this is sort of traditionally what you're used to looking at, and my definition for what scooping means is any alteration to this shape that removes fabric or paper from the edge. So let's go through a, a few things that it could mean. It could mean that you're taking your center back line and pushing it towards the side seam. So I'm just gonna draw this in yellow. So you're creating a bigger U shape. So you're scooping the shape. Um, sometimes it means actually coming down and scooping the back crotch like this and then rejoining at the inseam, that would be considered scooping the crotch seam. And typically I would use this if I needed more sitting room or if I needed to lengthen the crotch area from here to here. Um, another thing that would be considered scooping the crotch is if I decide to lower the whole base of the crotch curve to remove excess vertical length on the back leg. So that would be, you know, doing something like this. And you can see I'm getting a lot of yellow in here now. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, sort of show you that any change where you're removing paper or fabric would be considered a scoop. So you can scoop in the front or the back and when we're talking about the front crotch curve, it's really the same issue. You've got a curve in the front of your body going towards the back, just like you have a curve in the back going towards the front. It's just in the front, it's a much smaller curve, so those adjustments are much smaller. So going forward um, in weeks to come, I'm going to show you specifically how to scoop, when to scoop, and also when not to scoop. Because again, sometimes scooping is not the answer and it can actually be detrimental to the grain line of your pattern. So I just wanted to, the next thing I wanna talk about is I wanna give you a little introduction to the top-down center out method of pants fitting um, developed by Ruth Collins and I'm really I just want to reiterate what I said last week that you know if you have a method of fitting pants and it works for you then it's a good way to do it and I have a fun little quote that Ruth actually sent me and it's from 19 um, 16 and basically it says a pattern can be secured by drafting to measurements free cutting modeling molding also a commercial pattern may be purchased any and all ways are good provided you understand you know what you're doing by using that method so I thought that that was a really cool um, quote, and it's kind of like the theme of my process. So um, I want to review the top-down center out method, and I know I said I was going to do it today, but after delving into it, it I realized it was going to take me a little bit longer to um, get that together so I could really do it justice. So the first thing I want to talk about is 
where you can find a really good step-by-step -step guide to this process. Threads Magazine did an amazing article for this method with Ruth, and I just want to talk about magazines for a minute as an aside here. This is a beautifully curated sewing experience, and it's a wonderful value when you stop and consider how much information you get from every issue. So I want to really encourage you to subscribe to Threads Magazine because we want to support these kind of resources, digital and video and all of these PDF things flying around the internet are wonderful, but there's something about being able to turn the page and look and see and make notes and reference it. I, I really, um, I really think there's huge value to printed materials and we have to support them before they're gone. So I'm putting a link to subscribing to Threads Magazine in the description below. And I just want to talk a little bit about what is the role of a sewing magazine. There is a variety of topics and techniques and tips and tricks and products in here. And depending on what kind of technique it is, there are, there are techniques that show you every step of the process because it can be fit into a two, four, six page article. More complicated techniques like pants fitting take up more pages in the magazine, but they also don't include every little detail of the process because if they did, that one technique would be the entire issue and then we would be talking about a different thing and that's called a book. So I just want to sort of remind you that when you're reading about a sewing technique that's really involved, I think the role of a good quality sewing magazine like Threads Magazine is to excite you, inspire you, give you the information to try it and then point you to further resources where you can get the whole story or the whole process. So when you look at the article on the top down center out method, keep in mind that you also might want to reach out to Ruth at her Instagram and it's Ithaca, it's at Ithaca Maven um, on Instagram. So you can see right here, I'm putting it. Um, so definitely check out her Instagram page because she posts a lot of helpful things there. And also, you know, I'll be reviewing it so you'll be able to, you know, check that out as well. But I just wanted to, you know, just talk about Threads for a little bit because I personally know a lot of the people behind the scenes at Threads and they work so hard to create such an amazing sewing experience for you on these pages. So please consider subscribing to Threads Magazine. You'll notice I don't, there is no little sticker here from this issue being mailed to me. I paid full retail for this magazine, which is kind of silly because what if I want to see something next month or the next quarter? So I'm actually going to subscribe. I'm going to use my own link to subscribe to Threads Magazine um, so I can get every issue. And I really encourage you to support them and do the same thing. So I'll be working from this article when I review the process next week. So that's the first thing. Before I review the five steps of the top down center out method, I want to just talk a little bit about the philosophy behind it. So the crotch seam and the inseam are considered one continuous line from waist to hem in this method. And that really I think is a freeing kind of way to think about it because when you do this fitting method, you're working with the crotch seam and the inseam as one. So I'm kind of excited about that. The next thing is the crotch seam can be any shape. So I know there's a lot of emphasis when you're fitting pants and people really go out of their way to find their shape and they get those curved rulers and they wrap it around themselves or use other methods to try to capture that shape. That does give you a lot of information about 
you know, how your curve should be if you're making a, you know, like super fitted pair of pants. But the crotch shape does not need to be identical to yours. It could actually be a straight line, a curved line. Um, it could be something that is vertical. There are all different shapes. And if you want more information about that, please go check out um, Ruth's Instagram because she has a lot of information about drafting um, through history and some of the unique shapes and the resulting very cool pants that are made from them. So I want to free your mind from thinking traditional crotch shape before we start on this new adventure. The next thing I want to say is there are five main steps to working with this process. The first step is to create a fitted waistband. Now this is really important and I'm thinking back to my process of muslin fitting and if you've ever taken a class from me you may remember me saying something like well we really can't see what's going on in your muslin until you fit the waist. So the waistband for this method is really critical and I am going to be um, ordering a roll of um, band roll interfacing. And the cool thing about this interfacing is that it provides stiffness. It doesn't crush or twist. And it's going to give you a really good base for your waistband. You can buy it... Um, you can buy it from Wawak, but it's in a 50-yard roll. So maybe if you search the internets, you can find it in a less um, quality uh, quantity. But also maybe I'll get it and sell it as, you know, yard and a half pieces or something. We'll see. But I'm going to order the one and a half um, inch wide roll band. So you're going to need some sort of stiff interfacing to create a fitted waistband. That's the first step. If you don't want to get the roll band, you can certainly use something like this. I got this at Joanne Fabrics and it's kind of a craft um, interfacing. It's got some heft to it. It's completely non-stretch and I think it could create a similar waistband to test this method. So this is really inexpensive. You know, it was two dollars and or it was four dollars a yard, but then I used a coupon, so um, you can use something like this if you don't want to get the roll band. The next step is you want to prepare your pattern. Now, I am going to be using the free pattern that was a collaboration between um, In the Folds and Peppermint Magazine. So it's the wide leg. Um, pants from Peppermint Magazine. I'll put a link to that pattern in the description below. So if you want to follow along after I review it next week and try it with this pattern, you can do that. It's available in a full size uh, AO or the A4 paper where you tape it together. So you can feel free to, um, you know, download that and it's free. So that's the pattern I'm going to be using. Now there are specific steps to preparing your pattern and I will go over those next week. The next part of um, this method is to um, make a half pattern. So we're going to be working with one leg. Now this sort of um, creates a little bit of a conundrum when you're trying to share this method um, visually because obviously if you only have one pant leg on then your underwear shows because it's really better to do pants fitting without wearing something underneath. So I have some really long leg boy short underwear so that's what I'm going to be wearing. Um, the inseam I think is probably two and a half inches so it's really almost like wearing a pair of spandex shorts that my daughter runs around in in volleyball so that's what I'm going to be wearing when I do this method so I'm not gonna you know I want to keep all of my <laughs> my secret secret so I that's what I'm gonna wear when I um, test this method so it's one leg you sew the leg together and then you start fitting so step four is you fit the top and then down that you know, down to the hem along the inseam, and then you fit from center, meaning the center crotch, um, center front and back crotch, 
out to the side seam. So that is the fourth step of this process. And then the fifth step is you transfer any changes you made um, during your fitting, and then you cut out your pants and sew them together. So super excited about testing this or reviewing this. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of value in this process because just having the ability to see the leg hanging and the way the fabric is hanging um, I think gives you a lot of information and that also just reminds me of another thing I want to say about this method um, I think it's important and Ruth um, says this in her materials that you want to look at the pattern and look at what the designer intended it to look like on a body so the pattern you're working with is designed to be, you know, loose fitting, snug, you know, a, a wide leg, a tapered leg, whatever it is, you want to, you know, pick a pattern that's going to give you the silhouette you want so you're not trying to change that as well as fit that. So this peppermint pattern is a wide leg, relatively loose fitting pattern. That's what we're going to be working with. I think it's a really simple pattern to try a new technique with you know and then once you've got the steps down and you you know have gone through the process then you can work with other patterns that might be a little bit more challenging so that's what we're going to be doing next week and I just wanted to give you some you know some tips for preparing um, and also I wanted to make sure you had the resources to check this out for yourself if you wanted to so again if you don't have a thread subscription, head out to Joann's or wherever you can buy your sewing magazines and pick up a copy of Threads Magazine right here. It's got a beautiful yellow dress on the cover. That's the issue that has um, this article. And then if you turn the page after that article, you can read another article about from my friend, um, Katrina, she actually wrote about silk fabric, and if any of you know Katrina, she is amazing, and she really is a expert when it comes to silk fabric, so that's fun. Um, and then one other thing that's really cool about um, threads is that they always review patterns. So they have a little section in the beginning where that you can see what's new, and you can see samples of it sewn up. There's so many things in this magazine you should be checking out. So go get your copy of Threads, subscribe, and get the mail to your house. It's actually more cost effective. And join me next week when I review the Top Down Center Out Method by Ruth Collins for Fitting Pants. I'm super excited. So I hope you guys in, are enjoying this series. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Um, I just want you to know that after I review this method, I'm going to continue on with more pants fitting techniques and all things, you know, around the idea of fitting the crotch. So um, this is just one stop on our journey, and I think it's going to be a super exciting, informative, and really helpful stop. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and if you're joining me for the draft along for the basic bodice this week we're going to be fine-tuning the fit of our bodices you can see it over here over my shoulder um, I want to make sure everybody has their shoulders fitted properly so when they measure the armhole for the sleeve draft it's accurate because I made the mistake of measuring my pattern to draft my sleeve and I forgot that I actually took up the shoulder so my actual armhole was smaller than what I used in the draft and so I had too much ease in my cap. So to prevent anybody from making that mistake, we're going to go over some basic fitting fine tune adjustments you may need to your muslin before we do the sleeve. So that's what we'll be doing on Friday at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time live. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Have a lovely rest of your day. Post all your questions and comments and check the links below for more information on how you can learn about the top-down center-out method of pants fitting. Have a lovely day.